This is a device that will improve your golf swing using a very unique method. And it changed a long-term swing issue for me within minutes of use. I feel like what I'm about to share with you is close to cheating on a golf course and it is totally legal for competitive use. And when you consider I have declared to an end of exaggerated plaudits and a zero tolerance to clickbait, this is a bold statement. You can wear this device in a tournament round and it will analyze your swing as you play and post round provide you detailed information about every swing taken and did those swings meet your desired swing parameters? Almost like having your golf coach follow you around, videoing each shot and telling you the mistakes you made. But what if this device sent your brain a signal each time you didn't swing the club within your chosen parameters? Let me explain. This device measures your swing. You identify what you might like to change and using the learning stimuli, you set parameters for your swing and if you deviate from that target path, you will receive a light sting to the wrist. Your mind will quickly adapt, helping you to change an ingrained motor skill. The key to more consistency is a repeatable golf swing. Deviz is a lightweight wearable technology that analyzes each of your swings in real time to give you accurate swing data like never before. It basically consists of three main features. Hit it longer by lengthening your swing. Now I'm not necessarily motivated by distance, but I do have a habit of not completing my backswing. Hit it straighter, this I am interested in, and I have a move in my transition that I am very excited to see if this device can help eradicate and hit it closer. Yes, I am in. Distance control is something that I also have an issue with. I just want to point out, you know, this is the first time that I've took it out on the golf course. So everything so far has been an indoor situation and just testing out the product itself. But the ability to use it on the golf course is what you're seeing right now. I would automatically take my practice swing and my practice swing would uh, or the watch or the device rather would let me know that my practice swing is still got that movement over the top so it's just a gentle reminder all the time that you're still making that movement and it's a subconscious movement because I've been doing it for so many years and that's the problem with lessons I'll have a lesson I'll correct the issue and I'll start dropping down on the inside for a little while and then midway through a round you start to wonder what is going wrong well quite possibly that movement is creeping back in so out on the course which is the reality element I take a few practice swings and it tells me you're, you're, you're doing this wrong effectively your transition is still coming outside that line and you're able to correct that before you actually get and address the ball now obviously you can't do that in competition but it's a great way of obviously practicing and drilling into the brain exactly the fact that you continue to make this movement it's incorrect and over a period of time i would imagine that will start to almost self-correct and that's what i'm hoping to see but i cannot believe just how much difference it's made That's the other interesting bit that um, I'm not sure how good the audio is because I've not got the mic set up right now. I wasn't expecting to speak out on the golf course, but uh, some immediate response is that I've also got some parameters set up for length of backswing. And really the only thing I'm interested in is the longer, the driver, five wood in this case. What I've noticed on the golf course is my swing length becomes a heck of a lot shorter. And... Um, Maybe that again becomes, it's, it's all part of anxiety in terms of the fact, you know, you just want to hit the golf ball. And rectifying that, obviously the, um, the idea behind trying to lengthen that swing is to try and increase distance. Uh, so that's a hard one to get to grips with. 
particularly on the golf course where I've noticed, yes, I can do it inside in that controlled environment, but coming outside, generally, I'm falling short of the parameters that I set. So in other words, I'm not extending my full length of backswing uh, to its potential, if you like. But I'm still not sure whether that's 100% a good thing or a bad thing, because I like to be in control as well and not necessarily all out. And uh, that is all about the parameters that you set. So one final takeaway from on the golf course is distance control with wedges. Now that was a 58 degree wedge of which I wanted to play a three quarter swing. I'll have to watch that back to see if I actually executed that or not because quite often you extend that swing in reality so you know I don't know what happened. The distance control was good and it worked really well but I think that's where you've got to work with the watch on course and see what happens in reality of understanding all your wedge distances so whatever wedges you play with a half swing three quarter and a full you've really got to start working dialing in those numbers and then when you come to that shot you know exactly which club to go for and what length of swing you need to play and once again practicing with the device on the wrist setting those parameters will tell you whether you're achieving that or not and that's what I love it's immediate feedback it resonates in the brain and you start to get some positive reality between what's happening out on the golf course what you're doing inside in terms of maybe a driving range what the device is telling you and all of those things come together and they end up just lodging in here which is the important bit because that's where it is all stored There's another little interesting fact for you is the um, the watch now isn't on and it's not giving me any kind of jolt or reminder as to what is going right or going wrong. Well, just having it on the wrist acts as a constant reminder of what it is you're trying to achieve. So just as a visual aid in itself, just to glance down and just remember, okay, this is what I'm working on right now. This is what the device would be telling me if I do it wrong. Just somehow plants that seed in your mind and you're still trying to work on, in my case, that transition and making sure I take it a little bit on the inside and not make that casting motion over the top. It's incredible the, uh, what the mind does to you in a game of golf. I've been wearing this device for uh, quite a number of weeks now and there's just a few elements that I want to make you aware of and make sure that I got you the right information and uh, maybe put a little bit of clarity on exactly what this thing does. I also mentioned at the beginning of the video that it uh, eradicated or helped to begin to eradicate a move within my golf swing which is a cast in motion and over the top motion at the top of my swing which I've had forever and this device helped me within 16 minutes so the reason I left that first 3rd of November information up on the screen for you is because when I started at 11.26, I soon realized that the swings that I was putting on included that cast in motion. So when I get to the top of my backswing, I move out. And what you'll see on the data in front of you now is the plus numbers indicate how much off plane I was in terms of over the top. And uh, I think we were sort of plus six centimeters was perhaps the average that I was off plane. Now, under plane is, uh, will be a minus number, or zero is on plane. Now, there's nothing that suggests that one is 
right or the other, but the general sense of opinion would be that if we can get the club swinging on plane, it would probably mean a more consistent swing. And what you'll see is the numbers on screen now from 11.42 was a direct reaction to what the device was telling me. So I set some parameters up and the parameters I set are that I didn't want to go uh, over the top more than two centimeters. So I didn't want to see a figure over and above plus two centimeters. And I didn't want to come under that plane by minus two centimeters. If either of those things happen, then this little device gives you a little jolt in the arm. I say jolt in the arm, a vibration, let's say, that's a better description, that you have not achieved your goal. And very quickly, what this does is it trains the mind to recognize where you are in the swing. And that's something that I mentioned throughout. So that for me was a key feature. Now exactly the same, that setting parameters that I referred to is the same if you wanted to lengthen your swing. And if your swing was, I don't know the numbers, if the swing was 130 centimeters long and you wanted to see if you go another six centimeters further, you could set some parameters that let you know exactly the same if you're not achieving it. Same with that short game. If you want to start practicing half swing, three quarter swings, and you start to measure where those swings are, you can set parameters to let you know when you are not hitting them. For me, without doubt, the using of this device on course was the real key element for me. It's important to note you can use this device in competition, but you can't have that vibration tool on. So very much using a, uh, I would say, a rangefinder without slope, you can't use that element in competition. But what it does do in practice rounds is you set those same parameters. And what I found was that it will notice your practice swing and still let you know if you're on plane or if you're in or outside of those parameters. And that for me was key to a point where halfway through the round, I switched the vibration tool off. And what that meant was then it was left to me to try and work it out. But as I said in the video, by having it as a visual aid and just knowing and recognizing just one element, what I was trying to achieve, that by the way is a backswing, then I soon became very much concentrated on that movement and it really helped. I cannot believe how much difference it makes. And I've continued to wear that watch and some of the footage you've seen with some Southern Essa video I filmed last week with the watch on me on course. It acts as a fantastic training aid. I really do believe that this is possibly the start of something incredibly special by the Wiz, and I think it's something that they will no doubt develop. I also think it's something that it work really well in conjunction with working with your lessons with your PGA professional and helping them to set those parameters. Um, and I can't see a negative really as to, from a PGA professional's point of view, on uh, how they wouldn't think that device might help that whole process of trying to eradicate certain elements in your swing. There's lots more that this thing does, but far too much for me to go over in a video and something that I might do in further detail in the weeks ahead. There was one last element I wanted to make, one last point I wanted to make, and that was the fact that this watch is around 500 British pounds. That's a lot of money and there's a ooh from the crowd right now. And it is a lot of money. It's the same price as a brand new driver and we'd arguably spend on the driver quite uh, you know, nonchalantly to a degree. Um, but spending on a training aid was essentially what this is. Well, maybe we start to raise a few eyebrows. I would think that if you're looking to improve your game, that investment of 500 quid is far greater into that than it is into a new driver and will do far more to help improve your game. The other point I want to make is that I read on DeWiz's website that they offer 30 day money back guarantee. Now I love to see that because basically if you don't like what you've got and if you're not happy with it you send it on back that is a bold statement from any manufacturer and i kind of like them to see like to see people putting their money where their mouth is and that very much is to me confidence that they think this product will help i'm amazed by it i think it's a real game changer and i think that it's a it's the start of what is a real game changer and as i said i think that the way this develops over the next few years will be interesting to see but i think it will be hugely popular right i hope i did a good enough explanation um 
just trying to help you understand but obviously go to the DWIS website and there's a lot of videos on there which I've had to watch a lot of in terms of tutorials to get a better understanding and they probably explain it better than I did anyway thanks for watching I'll see you all soon